machines doing all the laborious and mind-numbing tasks that need to get done to keep society functioning has been the dream of humanity since we put a walkie-talkie inside a tin man. Since then, automation has clearly come a long way. Machines with some level of logical thinking have become a staple on production lines around the world. But massive recent improvements in artificial intelligence programs, battery technology, and mechanical systems means that almost 100 years after that Tin Man took his first step at the World's Fair, we may be on the verge of having machines that can perform any task better than a human can. In that time though, the idea of robots taking all of our jobs has changed from a utopian dream to something that people around the world are deeply afraid of. ChatGPT is barely two years old now, and is still far from perfect. But since its release, we have already seen big changes in how companies allocate jobs, college students cheat on assignments, and in the way people look for work. Now, there is no better way to make yourself look like an idiot than to predict the progress of technology. But there is a lot that businesses, governments, and individuals would need to change right now about the way they work to get the ideal version of automation instead of the alternative. Here we have 10 times the amount of robotics as compared to any of our other fulfillment desk centers. We can uh, process your order 25% faster. Phoenix, about a month ago, Amazon is now using drones to deliver packages around the Phoenix Metro. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports at least 42% of U.S. employees' jobs are at high risk of automation. It's very sad. Uh, you watch watch the equipment trickle out, tear things down, throw things away. The IT department of every company is going to be the HR department of AI agents in the future. Okay, so the easiest way to think about what full automation will mean for your own personal financial situation is to realize that we are all born with a portfolio of assets that are actually worth a lot of money. Now, unfortunately, for all of you would-be Nepo babies, most of those assets come in the form of hours that we have to trade in return for some kind of pay. According to estimates from the OECD and Gettysburg College, most of you watching will effectively sell between 80 and 90,000 hours of your life in exchange for money. Since statistically, most of you watching are men, that number is actually more like 100,000 hours since men are generally less likely to take significant amounts of time off of work to stay home with a family. Regardless of the specifics, even with a relatively modest salary, those tens of thousands of hours are easily worth more than a million dollars. And if you are clever about getting the right skills, making the right career moves, and kissing the right buttocks, it will probably be worth much more. We probably don't like to think about it like this, because frankly, it's a bit depressing. But for the vast majority of you watching, your greatest asset is not your home, your share portfolio, or your PSA 10 Charizard. It's the hours of work you can sell over your lifetime. Anything you can do to improve the value of those hours, be it upskilling, voting for pro-worker policies, or just making sure you're spending your valuable time well, should make you richer in the long term more than almost anything else. Assuming you don't already have a huge portfolio of other assets or take on too much debt in the process. Now logically, this means that anything that threatens the value of this asset should be really alarming to you. A machine or program that can do all or even part of your job is such a threat. It's competition in the market for work that makes your own hours less competitive and therefore less valuable. A study by Pew Research found that in total, 90% of American jobs were at the highest risk of automation from artificial intelligence. A similar study conducted by Goldman Sachs found that only around 9% of jobs were at similar immediate risk globally. And that is mainly because America has a higher proportion of service-based jobs. The Pew Research study actually found that people with higher levels of education were more at risk of being replaced because they were proportionally more likely to be working an office job. It has turned out to be much easier to replace the people inputting stuff into computers than to replace the people that would require real-world outputs from computer-operated machines. Now, 90% of jobs disappearing within a decade would simply be devastating to people who still need to sell their time for money. There hasn't been a sustained drop in jobs that severe since we started collecting economic data. Even if you are one of the lucky ones that can hold on to a job, the market will be flooded with people who have lost theirs and will be willing to work for anything they can get. If your hours are your greatest asset, then this would be the equivalent of a panic selling event. One other important variable is your age. Of course, if you are younger, you have a larger holding of hours in your life to sell off. As you age, you should statistically build up actual wealth with more typical investments. If you are broadly invested in the markets, some of your capital will go towards companies who themselves will use it to invest into this automation technology. Already, most of the biggest companies in the world are investing hundreds of billions of dollars into AI technology. Again, this will mean that wealthier older people with more real investments will likely benefit from widespread automation, while younger people just starting out will be forced to compete with it. But what else is new? 
So yeah, if you want to prepare for this, learn to work with your hands, or, you know, maybe try to be independently wealthy. Now, a more realistic solution might be to build up a system where someone's value isn't entirely tied up in how many hours of work they have to sell. Now, that would require long-term planning from both governments and businesses. But assuming we could get everybody on board, it's time to learn how many works to find out if it's even viable. This week's video is sponsored by 8sleep. As someone who writes, edits, and basically lives in front of a screen, I've learned that productivity doesn't start with your to-do list. It starts with your sleep. That's why I've been using the new Pod 4 from 8sleep. 8sleep is leading the charge in smart sleep tech. And the Pod 4 is their most advanced system yet. It regulates temperatures on both sides of the bed, tracks your sleep and health metrics without any wearables, and even adjusts in real time to keep you in deeper sleep longer. Since I started using the Pod 4, my sleep has become more consistent, and my mornings, totally different. I'm up earlier, more focused, and actually excited to start writing. No more staring at a blinking cursor for half an hour. Plus, I love that the Pod takes care of everything automatically. I don't have to think about it. It just works in the background so I can focus on scripts, edits, and keeping creative burnout at bay. Transform your sleep with 8sleep's Pod 4 mattress cover that fits on any existing mattress. Use my code MONEY for an exclusive discount on your purchase. Last week, Tesla held its earnings call after less than stellar sales and profit numbers. The company is valued like a high-growth company, but its financials are now starting to look more like a post-growth car company. Now, the news that got the most attention is that Elon Musk will be returning to the helm as a full-time CEO again. But the other 99% of the call was dedicated to convincing shareholders that current car sales were irrelevant because the future of the company was in replacing jobs with technologies like full self-driving taxis and their Optimus humanoid robot. Optimus ultimately will be worth more than the car business, worth more than FSD. That's my firm belief. Making a robot like this that takes the form of an adult human is extremely challenging to build. But if they or some other company can pull it off, it does have two huge advantages over typical commercial robot arms. The biggest benefit is that the world is tooled for adult humans. Everything from screwdrivers to reception kiosks are designed with human operators in mind. A humanoid robot could in theory use generic tools designed for humans instead of expensive custom parts that only work with a specific machine. Even something extremely simple like your robot vacuum cleaner has this problem. If its mop head breaks, you need to go and buy a specialized replacement part from that specific supplier. If a humanoid robot breaks its mop, it could just go out and get a new one from Home Depot. This means that companies wouldn't need to design processes from the ground up with automation in mind. They could just replace humans with human-like machines. Finally, and perhaps most importantly for the people who will actually be buying things, they will be cheap. A standard 6-axis industrial robot arm, the kind you see in videos of car assembly lines, costs tens of thousands of dollars each. And that's assuming you are brave enough to order your advanced industrial equipment off Alibaba. Realistically, if you are a manufacturing executive setting up an automated production line, you are probably going to source your machines from a more… established company. And once you have purchased the individual arms, plus the control system, plus installation, you are looking at a multi-million dollar investment at minimum. Humanoid robots would not need to be customized to each use case, so they could be generically mass-produced in large volumes, and since they don't use a huge amount of materials, there is theoretically no reason why they couldn't be the same price as an entry-level car. According to Elon Musk, during Tesla's presentation, the company's humanoid Optimus robots will sell between $20,000 and $30,000 once they go into production. Now, these predictions are always rock solid, and historically, there hasn't been any reason to doubt Tesla's timeframes or numbers. But, even at $100,000 per unit, these machines would present a compelling investment opportunity. If they just replaced someone making the national average, they would pay themselves off in two years. For Tesla in particular, this is a great opportunity because its brand reputation matters far less for these kinds of business-to-business -business strategic acquisitions. Regardless of your own personal opinions of Elon Musk, he has turned away a lot of potential EV customers. But other companies simply don't care. They would buy tools from Satan himself if it improved their bottom line. That is, assuming it actually works. There are plenty of vocal critics who have argued that humanoid robots may sound great in theory. But for most applications, specialized machines will always be more cost-effective in the long run. Now, even if it's just an investment bubble, there will be a lot of money for any company that can bring a broadly capable humanoid robot to market. But this presents an even bigger problem for every other company in the world. If automation makes everybody redundant, who is going to be left to sell to? I actually made a big mistake when I covered that exact question in a video I made last year. 
I said that eventually, businesses should shift their production offerings to cater exclusively to other businesses or wealthy asset owners who make their income from investment returns rather than exchanging their hours for dollars. My mistake was that this is literally already happening. About a week after that video went out, a report by Moody's Analytics found that the top 10% of households by income are now responsible for more than half of consumer spending in the economy. And that trend is only increasing. In the past, mechanization has made people more productive. Most of the world's population is richer today than it has been at any point in history. That's not because businesses have become more compassionate towards their workers. It's because machines have made man hours more productive and therefore more valuable. But now, technology is not making them more productive. It's making them redundant. So businesses can prepare by either going up market with their products to appeal to asset owners or by going down market to get what they can still get out of people with no other options. Now, businesses are going to do whatever they can to maximize profit for their shareholders. This is what they are made to do, by design. It's easy to anthropomorphize greedy companies and blame them for everything. But blaming a company for maximizing profit is like being angry at a deli slicer for not showing restraint on a haircut. It's not really what they do. That responsibility should fall into governments who, theoretically, represent the people who will be made redundant. My old colleague who now runs the channel Micro made a great video about how mindlessly creating jobs for the sake of creating jobs might be popular politically, but it has made us ill-equipped to deal with changes like this when they present themselves. As always, I will leave a link to that below. The most direct solution would be to ban the use of technology that could replace taxpayer jobs, but that would be extremely short-sighted. We have already seen the beginnings of this with the dock worker strikes that happened late last year. The strikes came to a close with the tentative agreement that the ports would not introduce any automated machines that had the potential to take dock worker jobs. This was a union fighting for the best interests of their workers, which is exactly what they should do. But long term, it's been hard for any group to fight the march of progress. You can't ban the internet, the car, or the light bulb just to keep librarians, the horses, and the lamplighters in business. If we don't use advanced automation, other countries will, and international companies will just move their operations there instead. A better solution would be to encourage this technology, but make sure that the people stand to benefit from it. Unfortunately, this technological shakeup is happening at a time when we can least fiscally afford it. Optimistic ideas about universal basic incomes or capital reallocation might work, but they will cost a lot of money, a lot of money that will be hard to get without significant new taxes. Unfortunately, the same people that stand to benefit the most from a fully automated future would also be the biggest targets for those taxes. Major technological changes have always had a destabilizing impact on societies, from the steam engine to the internet. But combining that with an already unstable economy is very bad, to put it bluntly. This technology could give us a Jetsons future, but only if we are valued at more than the hours in our day, which we will need because not only is AI getting smarter every day, it might also be making us dumber. Go and watch this next video to find out if we have already passed peak human intelligence and why the last two decades have seen us starting to go backwards. And don't forget to like and subscribe to keep on learning how money works.